Hey everyone, Georgetown Soaps. I am getting ready to make 20 pounds of lilac and I'm going to split it up between four or five pound batches. So if you see the little cup I'm pouring my fragrance oil into, that is one of the new bigger cups from Be Scented. It's about three ounces and so for a five pound batch of soap I use about two and a half ounces so it's actually the most perfect little cup container for pouring out fragrances. Um, I forget the type of plastic it is, but the fragrance oil or the essential oils are not going to eat through the plastic. So here I've already pre-mixed all my oils so I don't bore you with pouring out all my oils. I've added my kale and clay and my colloidal oatmeal. So now I'm really just doing a really good stick blending of that just to make sure it's all fully incorporated and I don't get any um, clumps or spots in my finished soap. And so here I've added my fragrance oil. Sorry about the camera angle. I'll work on that next time. Sometimes I'm so focused on making the soap I forget to look up at the camera. But I added the fragrance and florals are notorious for accelerating. Um, this does not accelerate at all. It didn't rice. You can see it's still very, very fluid. Um, and so I decided to use three colors. I'm going to use activated charcoal, titanium dioxide, and then the pretty purple. The pretty purple is the fluorescent or neon purple from Be Scented, but I'm going to add a little TD to just kind of tone it down a little bit to make it a little bit more lilac-y. Um, I've never seen any neon purple lilac, so, but it's a gorgeous purple, but by just by adding a little bit of TD, you can uh, really tone it down and make it into a gorgeous color if that's not the bright color you're going for. All right, and so here I am, I'm mixing my last color, the activated charcoal. If you watch a lot of my videos, you say I add a lot of activated charcoal on a lot of the colors. I really do like how the other colors pop against the black. I just think it's a nice color scheme. Um, and there's added benefits to adding activated charcoal to your soap. So you get the color benefit and you get the you know, benefits of the actual activated charcoal in the soap. Um, and then what you're not going to see is I skipped out about 10 minutes of video because I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting some more for the batter to thicken up, um, which it didn't. 
which is a good thing. Um, I tend to err on the side of not stick blending a lot. And so as a result, I knew what kind of design I was going for, but I knew my batter was also way too fluid. So I kind of sat there and I stirred it, I stirred it, I stared at it, stirring at it didn't really help thicken it up. So it's a great thing because the fragrance does not accelerate. And you know, I do a two to one water discount. So even if you're not doing a water discount, you're gonna have plenty of time to work with this fragrance, which is super nice. Um, so here you can see I'm stirring, trying to talk my little fragrance into thickening up a little bit. Um, I'd rather it be too fluid than be a plop and drop. So I'm not really skilled at doing the plop and drops. Some people make them look so pretty when they're done, but I'm not a big plopper and dropper. So um, again here, I'm just sitting here stirring, 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 waiting for it to thicken up. And I think at this point I probably did take the titanium dioxide and I stick blended it because it was super, super thin. Um, I know titanium dioxide is supposed to accelerate trace, but I just find if I've got three colors, um, the activated charcoal definitely does accelerate um, and that thickens up nicely, but for me, <laughs> titanium dioxide does not tend to accelerate like it does for some people, um, but again, maybe that's just because I'm not a big stick blender. So I've got my white back, um, and again, look at how fluid it is. This is probably 10 minutes after adding the fragrance oil to the batter. So you can see with a discount, this fragrance behaves fantastic for being a lilac. So it's super nice and it smells fantastic. Um, spring is blooming here. Not sure what time of the year you guys are gonna be watching the video, but it's beginning of May in Washington, DC. And so it just seemed like a really appropriate fragrance to be making a whole bunch of right now. Um, this fragrance, I sell a lot of candles and I sell a lot of soap in, especially this time of the year. It sells year round, obviously, really well, but this time of the year, I think people are into the spring fragrances and everything. Um, but again, look at my batter. It just will not thicken up. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. All right, so I finally got the batter to the consistency I really wanted. Um, so now it's time to pour, and um, I'm just kind of going to go with it. I don't really have a design in mind, just kind of how it all flows out. We'll see what happens. Um, I typically do do the chopstick swirl, and I don't know who created that or whoever started doing that, but I always watched a ton of videos um, from Jen from a and Sons and such, and she's always doing a lot of chopstick swirls. So I decided I'd roll with that for the day. And again, here I'm just plopping and dropping, just kind of no rhyme or reason, just kind of alternating colors. And you can see the white is still super, super, super fluid. Um, so this is just great news for the fragrance because you know it's not gonna accelerate. So I think, you know, this is the first one I did. I think in the next couple lilac videos, I will have stirred a lot more just to make it a little bit thicker, just to make the whole process speed up faster. Because if you're spending 10, 15 minutes waiting for your batter to thicken up, that's, you know, time is valuable when you're making soap. So I could have made a whole nother batch in that amount of time. So anyway, enjoy the rest of the bore. <laughs>
Um, so here I just decided to do a little texturing on the top. Um, I actually did not end up doing the chopstick swirl for this one. I just felt like I got enough swirl in and I just wanted to see how it came out. So I'm just going to clean up the top of the mold. It's This is a tip that I kind of got from Jen. She always cleans up the top of her molds and just makes cleaning up once you've unmolded that much quicker because you don't have a lot of dried on soap better that you've got to you know scrape at and wash off even though the molds wash super clean it's just a lot quicker 
if you clean up in advance. And then I was super excited because I had just gotten the mystery box from Be Scented and it had another glitter puffer sprayer bottle. And so I decided I would grab my purple glitter and go ahead and use the new glitter sprayer bottle. So I think I'm just pulling that out right now and getting it all ready. I remember when I first started making soap, I was so anti-glitter. So anti-glitter. I said I will never ever use glitter. A couple of my soap friends kind of made fun of me. They're like, you'll use glitter eventually. You'll use glitter eventually. And so I kind of started just, you know, I bought a bottle of glitter. I bought one of the puffer bottles. I started using glitter. And a lot of the little girls who come up to my markets, you know, if they're, I've usually got 65 to 70 different soaps, you know, sitting out there. And it, sometimes they're indecisive and their dads are like, okay, just pick one. So I'll grab one that's got glitter. I'm like, hey, how about the glitter on top? And their eyes light up and dad is like sold so <laughs> that's one way to help a sale um, for certain fragrances just add a little bit of glitter can't really go wrong with glitter sometimes and what I'm doing in the background I didn't show you but I am cleaning out my soap dishes because I find that if you clean them out um, in some of my cutting videos, you'll see the yellow cloths. I get a whole bunch of microfiber towels um, from Costco or Amazon. I probably have 50 or 100. And I will just go ahead and clean out my containers while I am waiting for soap to set up or in between. It just then I can reuse the containers um, for the next batch. So this is the purple glitter that I got from Be Scented. And the little glitter funnel is priceless. It's like the best $2 I've ever spent. Um, and I always seem to misplace them, so I've bought several of them, but they're fantastic. Um, they fit the bottle perfectly and really don't get a lot of mess. So you can see it kind of the glitter glow, the glitter goes right into the bottle. So super, super easy to use. And then you just keep the glitter in the bottle. Um, each bottle is really good for one color. You wouldn't want to be constantly changing out the colors for the bottles, but they're pretty inexpensive, so it's an easy way to apply your glitter. And here you can see I've got the top on the glitter sprayer and it's really super simple. You just kind of point and click. Um, I'll bring you guys a little bit closer in just so you can see how it really spreads a really fine layer on. So <coughs> a lot of times I'll do one layer or two layers just kind of come back, um, which is nice because you don't get a dumping of glitter all at once. So you've got the ability to do a really nice fine layer and then come back and do a second one just to add a little bit more. Um, but anyway, this soap turned out fantastic, and I'll bring you back for the cut shortly. All right, and we'll bring you back for the cut. Um, this soap is probably 36 hours old. I tend to put my soaps, especially with the silicone molds, into the oven and I don't turn the oven on right now in the summer um, but I will just let them sit in the oven and then they fully gel and they kind of cook a little bit so it helps get them harder but I was super super happy with this swirl um, very very happy with how it came out I just love the pop of the purple and the white and the black I think the colors all work really well so enjoy the rest of the cut thanks for subscribing and I'll see you on the next video